What's up guys, ABC Matt here, bringing you another video. Today I'm actually going to an NBA, former NBA basketball player's estate sale. It's a long line, so we'll see what I can find, but at least you could see how the house looks like. So I apologize for that brain fart. Um, so I'm at, at an NBA basketball player's at home. And uh, we're gonna see what we can find. There was at least a hundred people in front of me, and there was at least three hundred people behind me. The the article there was a newspaper article that's telling about this estate sale. So like, oh boy, it's already gonna be packed because of the estate sale company that's running it, and then the newspaper article is gonna make it worse. So going here, I didn't expect much, but I was curious how the lifestyle of an NBA player lives. It's actually uh, five bedrooms, four and a half baths, uh, house. And I thought it was a bit bigger, but I guess um, Terry Porter, who's the basketball player, by the way, uh, I guess he didn't get paid as much. So he didn't get a bigger house because of that, but he is moving. So maybe he's moving to a bigger place. So I'm looking at the hats and the hats, they, some of them are a little bit beat up some of them i don't even have a clue where they're from the packers hat i was like damn it's not shark tooth if it was shark tooth i would pick it up they probably i probably could still sell the green bay packer hat but this is state sale their prices are kind of on the high side so i have to be very selective of what i pick up the state sale company they have a following too i don't know how they do it but whatever price they charge, they always get a, the s amount of people to buy them. They will have at least 50 to 100 people dedicated to go to their estate sale. And I don't know why. <laughs> the prices are just too high on a lot of items. And um, they're crazy. They will have the zip code only disclosed, right? And then these people will wake up three in the morning and just drive around the whole entire zip code trying to find the, the state sale company's truck. So they are very dedicated. I give them that. And the state sale company, they really don't care that if it sells on the property because they have a warehouse where they also run uh, sales from. And there's a lot of people who go to their warehouse to buy stuff. So good business, probably not for a reseller but if you have a state if you need a state sale company to sell your stuff they're probably the best ones because they get the top dollar and they're very organized i give them that so i picked up a how to and then the leather jacket uh, the leather jacket should sell uh, took a little bit of a gamble with it because it's not a company i'm familiar with but leather jackets in, in a nutshell does sell if you're wondering why I'm just standing there looking at my phone it's because I'm just double checking the leather jacket uh, how much it goes for and then there was a couple of shirts in there that was uh, again it was a company I'm not familiar with so I'm just double checking what those possibly would go for those shirts are not um, popular I would say so I didn't pick those up so Terry Porter is a guard for the Portland Trail Blazers back in the 90s. He's 6'3", and his shoe size is size 11. Uh, I actually thought he was taller, and I thought he had bigger feet. The leather jacket, he it almost fits me, um, but 6'3", I'm like 5'8", five 5'9", five so I'm also surprised that it almost fits me. Hi. Um, how's it going? Good. Good. I, I don't envy you guys. A lot of people <laughs> in here. Oh. 
Now the kitchenware stuff, it's your classic, rich, um, mainstream products like William Sonoma and Tiffany. There were some Tiffany pieces. By the time I got to the kitchen, they, they were already gone. So, and I didn't think William Sonoma would sell. You guys tell me otherwise, but I don't know. It, it just seems like it's mass produced, you know, for rich people, you know. Um, so I'm just checking out the jewelry since I'm here. I saw some pieces that were interesting, but I don't know for for the pieces that were like eleven to fourteen to eighteen dollars. I'm like, ooh, it's that's too much of a gamble just to try it. You know, like jewelry pieces I find are usually like a dollar to five dollars. If you if you're charging like eleven dollars, that's a huge gamble to sell it. I, I don't even know if it would go for that much. It's not like they made of diamonds and stuff. Nevertheless, I still have to check it out and see what they have here. One thing I want to ask you guys, because I did ask Nurse Flipper Cat about it. I'm like, for jewelry, you know, it's so hard to find cops for them. Well, you know, how do you price them out? Like, you can find things that are somewhat similar, but I always feel like, you know, you find the comparables and you're like, did I undervalue it? Should I overvalue it? I'm not too sure. Always feel like you might take a little bit of a loss uh, just going by something that's somewhat similar in jewelry design. I was so tempted, so tempted to get to take this brass. I think it's brass jack o' lantern home with me, but I didn't see any descriptions on it or anything markings. So I don't know if this was customized or this was, you know, bought at Walmart. I had no clue. But if you guys are familiar with it, let me know. It seems. You know, unique. You normally you see things, blow modes or things Sorry. of that nature, but you never see a brass like that or copper. I, I don't know what it is, what kind of metal it is, but I also don't know where it's produced. So again, let me know if you've seen seen something like that and was that worth picking up? thing I miss I gotta look at these watches the watches are not like Tag Heuer or uh, Movado it's more of Seiko or Timex so it's the old school watches that people wanted these are all ladies watches normally for watches I usually don't pick them up because they're all beat up to hell these are actually in good condition so I did take a gamble and pick one. Actually, I picked up two watches. So you'll see that later in the in the hall and the comps. While that bunny is impressive, it's actually scary too. The, the eyes is staring at you. So it's looking through my soul. So I I couldn't pick that up. No sorry. So as you can see, there's a lot of people. It's a big house. The house, again, is five bedrooms, four and a half baths. I believe it's 5,868 square feet on a 1.4 acre lot. It's, it's a decent sized house, but some areas are a little more crowded than others, obviously, because he does have some memorabilia here, like signed footballs, basketball sneakers but they're not authenticated 
so you don't know if they're real or not and um, to take it to an authenticator and then sell it it could be pricey um, memorabilia is a little harder than cards cards pe people buy for the fact that it's already authenticated or it will be it's cheaper and it's easy to store easy to display you really have to find like a hardcore fan of the particular player or team to have those side football jerseys and whatnot so this actually the line right here is actually the checkout line it leads to the garage and in between the lines is where the memorabilia is now in there when you first look it's the sneakers they're size 11 again i thought he would have bigger shoes than that uh, the condition is could be better uh, but not my thing and then there's some dvds here i don't want to bring home a dvd stuff i mean they, they go for a couple of dollars the bags nothing special in there more sneakers a lot of the signed photos and other memorabilia a lot of them were already taken already because the hundred people in front of me that's probably what the first thing they went to i looked at the cards over here they're all common cards common basketball common pokemon cards so nothing worthwhile there over here was a little bit of a battle this is where the bobbleheads were <coughs> now the bobbleheads they were charging too much for it they were charging like twenty dollars for some of them 15 for others the bobbleheads alone don't go for that much more than what they were charging then underneath there were some i would say like previous games from past years i guess he used it for scouting and stuff like that um analytics those are cool but those vhs tapes they were going twenty dollars a piece so eventually when this when these couple of people move out of the way i'm looking at the vhs now i'm going to look for popular teams playing each other but when i'm looking at it i see the la lakers which is popular but they're playing sacramento kings which is not popular and for twenty dollars it's not worth it it's a good wow factor to have but not for twenty dollars and just to think even the next day if I come here is 50% off so that $20 VHS is still $10 so $10 is still not even worth it I, I don't know for those type of tapes I don't even know if there's a market for them there's a cool factor but I'm willing to only gamble up to $5 I can't gamble anything $10 or up that's insane for just one VHS Now for the bobbleheads, I told you that the prices were kind of high. The, the, the players that they had, it's not even that great. You have like Steve Novak and you have um, like, like the bench players, you know, you, you have those types of play with players. That one that I just picked up, eventually I do pick that one up. So that one is with the Milwaukee Brewers, the baseball team. So at the, at the baseball team, um, game they have a race where it's like the giant heads mascots for like hot dogs bratwurst chorizo all the sausage stuff and they all run around the entire field to see who wins that one is the chorizo one and that one was kind of reasonable it was ten dollars when I eventually did the comps it goes for about thirty to thirty five dollars uh, without a box so now when I pick up, there's another one like on the top shelf that I noticed. That one is a Philadelphia 76ers Fat Albert. And I thought that one's going to be valuable as well because it's the 76ers who are popular. Then you have the pop culture with Fat Albert. But when I did the comps, it was, it was priced out what the market value is. So eventually I did put that one back down. Yeah. 
I'm sorry about the blanket. I no, no, don't be sorry. It was the roof. Well, then I was going to say. Uh, that would be in the garage. Well, we should ask somebody how much it is. Yeah. yeah. So this polo shirt is pretty cool. I believe these are the shirts they they will come out of the introductions uh, for the Olympic Games. So this is Team USA from 2020. It, it's it's cool because one, it's Team USA, and two is because it's made by Ralph Lauren Polo. So I picked that up. Later do I realize that there is even more value than I thought it would be. So that was a good pickup, good find. So I'm going to my phone. I have to check the Fat Albert and I told you earlier that it's going for market value so this is when I after I did the comps I did put it back down thanks for watching guys be sure to hit the like and subscribe I'm about 300 subs away from 1k which I'm shooting for and now I'm gonna show you the haul and the comps and I appreciate you watching First up, we have the Team USA uh, shirt, polo from Ralph Lauren. It's an awesome piece. It's actually worth more than I thought. Then we have the leather jacket. Now the leather jacket is not a brand name I'm familiar with, but leather jackets do sell, size 46. You can see in the inside, perfect condition. It was immaculate. Terry Porter actually kept in pristine condition. Then we have the Masters hat. You know, people, golf enthusiasts, they all like the Titleists and Masters. So that should sell. And actually it did sell once <laughs> as I'm editing this video. <laughs> then next I have this Vera Bradley. This seems unique. It's not really the style that traditionally you find for Vera Bradley. So I picked that one up. Then we have the Racing Chorizo guy told you earlier it's worth a little bit more money than actually they charge so I was surprised by that if you check the base of it also it's actually limited edition so it makes it has some more value than other bobbleheads then I have a Mickey watch you know Disney enthusiasts they, they're, they're pretty strong so they hopefully will buy this from me then we have the Seiko ladies watch it looks nice so I picked that up too I, again, I, earlier I told you I don't pick up watches, but I tried it. And now is the comps.